Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to talk about the desk 1.5. It's uh, still a work in progress, but I did pick up a 60 gallon and that was a pretty sweet find. Uh, I was definitely, you know, designing it for a 55 gallon and as I was researching different tank sizes, I remembered that, you know, the 60 gallon uh, is the same as the 55 except for the height so uh, the 55 is 48 by 12 by 18 and this is uh, 48 by 12 by 24 so it's six inches taller which is really nice um, and as you can see I threw in uh, some of the giant Danios and I threw in some sponge filters and as of now, I'll just have that going for a few days. Um, the sponge filters came from the 120, so they're already cycled and everything's good on that front. Uh, but I wanted to do a couple updates. One is I want to talk about one really important topic in the hobby that I don't think gets talked about enough. And the other is to give an update on what I'm thinking I'm going to end up putting in all these tanks. So um, I'm going to first start with uh, what I'm going to put in the tanks because in some ways to me at least that's the more fun part which certainly will play right into the next part which is uh, a topic that is very important for success in this hobby in my opinion. So I have been mulling over what I had said in the last video and that was my plan at that point and I really am getting to this place where I want to have things really simple. You know, I feel like when you first start on the hobby, you get, you just, you know, you get, if you get the bug of the hobby, you, you want to get as many fish as you can, different kinds, you, you know, you start getting more than one tank and things just really start to snowball. And I think it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, but it also can be stressful if you get in over your head in terms of the type of fish you're keeping or how many fish or if you buy too many fish before you actually buy the equipment you need in terms of filtration or you know even just the tank size it's very easy to get ahead of, your, ahead of yourself in this hobby and i think the problem is it, we live in a capitalist very consumerist society right we want instant gratification and we typically can in, mod, in the modern world you can order something on amazon go to petco petsmart and just get stuff there's credit cards you can just you know you can make stuff happen that's not necessarily grounded in reality and that coupled with uh living organisms right and not just living organisms but they actually actually have to live in an ecosystem that's also alive right the beneficial bacteria in this in the filters the way you maintain the tank uh it, there's a lot going on there's a lot of life it's not just the fish and so when you clash uh, a living ecosystem with living organisms with capitalism, I think you get a lot of people that kill a lot of fish and uh, even give up on the hobby because they get frustrated. That I feel is so important, which is patience. And it, that word, uh, you know, means different things to different people, but I think it's actually a very profound part of being a successful aquarium hobbyist and you know you could say in life in general but you know in contrast to you know having all this instant gratification in a in a, in a hobby where there are real lives at stake yes they're fish but you know uh, when you kill a fish you are killing a living organism you know it it our society doesn't set us up to learn patience and you have to learn the hard way in life and in this hobby that if you move quickly uh it's going to cost you a lot of money it's going to you're going to kill a lot of fish and also even if that doesn't happen even if you really know what you're doing and you move quickly um i found that because we're creating a living ecosystem it takes time to really tune into what you actually want and, you know, part of the hobby is changing it up. You know, I had African and American cichlids for a long time and I wanted to do something different. And I'm going to get cichlids again, but I'm not going to have 30 large cichlids in a large tank. And I'll get to that when I talk about, you know, where I'm, where I'm at with what I think I'll be doing stocking with. But my point is, 
you know, whether it's you're starting a new tank, you know, patience is huge, making sure that your tank is cycled, that you've, you know, taken the time to develop the beneficial bacteria and the filters that will sustain the life so you actually can enjoy the fish you buy and you don't just kill them. That's huge. And then patience around once you really commit to the hobby, once you really feel like, oh, this is something I love, around scaling the hobby, right? Getting more tanks, getting more fish. There's just so much of it where we just want to, typically people, I, and again, I've been very guilty of this, trying to just get the next thing and get another tank and get the next fish. And often we're sacrificing the fish's health. We're often sacrificing getting the correct equipment. You know, maybe we need a backup heater or we need a backup air pump or we're just not actually getting the right size filter because we're trying to buy a bunch of stuff. So we're getting the cheaper filter and the cheaper light. And you know, what I have realized and my point is, is more is not better in this hobby. Um, if you could have one aquarium that is gorgeous and beautiful and easy to take care of and super dialed, I would take that a thousand times out of a thousand over multiple tanks that are kind of just thrown together with you know used parts that you found on craigslist and it's just you know and trust me like i have nothing against stuff on craigslist this tank's off craigslist my 120 is off craigslist i love craigslist i love finding gold like there there's great things you can find on craigslist but it's about being intentional i think right if you just scoop up everything you see on craigslist you're gonna you're gonna end up with a bunch of crap and so you might get a tank that comes with stuff and doesn't mean you need to use all that stuff or you might buy a tank that comes with really nice stuff and you don't even use the tank and you sell the tank so i think just like in life in general i think what i'm getting at though is the more we're clear about what we actually want uh the less time we waste the less money we waste right um, the less pain that we create for ourselves or for other things people in our lives creatures that we're taking care of so, you know, I just think there is a, a level of maturity that comes through time in life and in the hobby around um, patience and clarity about yourself and what you want to get out of it and what you want to do. So, um, sorry if that felt preachy, but I'm just sharing some thoughts. But I will transition now into the stock lists, which are very much connected to that. And... I don't know about all of you, but I do follow a budget in my life. So I can't do all this stuff right away. You know, full transparency, I, I really believe in not going into debt. And so, and these are things people don't talk about in the aquarium hobby on, on YouTube typically. So if it's not for you, I apologize. But I think, uh, you know, these are, you're, you know, you're a real person, I'm a real person. Like, let's talk about real stuff. You know, I, and again, going back to being in a capitalist culture uh, that encourages you to go in debt, encourages you to get things now before you even have the money or whatever it is. I think it's really important to, to realize that that's just, uh, you know, a system based on making money, but not necessarily has you in mind. It's about growing giant corporations, etc. So um, to that point, though, I am doing this desk i've done everything in my life in stages because you know every year i do try to contribute more to the world and try to therefore get more money in return so i'm not against making money i'm not against capitalism in the sense of um, i think it's great that we live in a place where people can really express themselves freely and create products and services and you know we have so much opportunity in this country and i am so grateful for it and of course there's you know the other side of it that i'm talking about where some of it becomes addictive or uh, manipulative you know advertising the whole thing is just a spend 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 so my point though is you know i'm doing this in stages so i found this 60 gallon on craigslist again i love craigslist it's just about being intentional on craigslist and I got it for 60 bucks, so basically dollar per gallon. I'm gonna get the 229s uh, sometime in October. My Petco is gonna do a dollar per gallon, get those 229s. And then that should be all the fish tanks I have for a, a long time. 
like I said in the other video, there's really no other places in my house I actually want a fish tank. Are there spaces I could put a fish tank? Yes, but I've learned when I did do that during COVID, I put fish tanks everywhere, that that didn't actually bring me happiness, it was just more work. And so I wanna have tanks that I, I actually, uh, that are in high use areas, right? So I have, like I mentioned in the other video, I have two in the living room, dining room, and I have, I'm gonna have three here at the home office. That's it. Um, there's no other place in the house that I spend a significant amount of time and there, you know, when I go to the bedroom, I'm going to bed and I don't really hang out in my bedroom and the kid, I have a kid's playroom. I play in there, but when I'm in there, I'm playing with the kids. I'm not relaxing, looking at a fish tank. So anyways, this will be my last three tanks in the house, um, for the foreseeable future. So getting to the stock list. I've changed my mind about a few things. Again, I'm just getting more and more like simplified. I just want things simple and easy. And I've done, you know, the big cichlid tank with, you know, 30 plus cichlids and, you know, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of stress. They, you know, fight a lot, kill each other. And I felt like I had great success with it, but I, I, I kind of have my lifetime supply of like a giant Unless I can set up an auto water change system, I'm probably never going to have a, a large cichlid community again. So my plan is is for the uh, 120, I'm going to do a green terror as the showcase fish. And I'm going to get a blood parrot only because my wife really wants one. But otherwise, I would have just have just the green terror. I'm going to get only one Senegal Bicher. I used to, I, my previous stock list had three. Um, and I previously also was going to have a blue Texas in there, but I'm actually going to put the blue Texas in the 60. So the green, I'm going to have a green terror, a regular blood parrot, Senegal Bicher, a Bristol's Pleco, and, and that's it. You know, I want it to be understocked. And honestly, when we think about stocked, understocked, overstocked, that one green terror alone, is overstocked for a 120 gallon tank if you actually think about how much space they have in the wild. And that does translate to how much work you have to do with maintenance, right? That's actually not that big of a body of water to handle an eight to 12 inch fish. And I want these, my tanks to be as easy to take care of as possible moving forward. So 120 is gonna have the Green Terror, the Blood Parrot, the Senegal Bicher, Albrist Nose Pletco. That's it. The 60 gallon, I'm going to have uh, just the blue Texas and a bristle nose pleco. That's it. These Danios, I'm going to have in both tanks, but they're basically going to be sacrificed fish. If they survive, which many of them do, people keep giant Danios as dither fish with cichlids. That's great. More activity. If they get eaten, I'm not worried about it. So they'll be in there, but they're not planned stock. And then the 29, 229s, I am going to stick with one uh, flower horn blood parrot. And then the other 29, I'm gonna move the electric blue Akara that's currently in the 120 into the other 29. And both those tanks are just gonna have a bristlenose pleco, and that's it. I want things to be super simple. I'm gonna focus more on live plants, creating a more self-sustaining ecosystem. And I'm really excited about having beautiful tanks that are easy to take care of, and that I don't have to worry about. You know, if I have one green terror and a blood parrot in that 120, there's nothing to worry about. If they fight, you know, I can deal with that. But then I'll just pare it down to the green terror. But one blue Texas, one, it's one fish. It's going to have that tank all to itself. Nothing to worry about. Blood parrot, blue car, or flowerhorn blood parrot, and a blue car, same, same. So again, I'm just there. Again, we, but. In fairness, I'm only getting to this place because I had this giant cichlid community. I did what I wanted to do. I scratched the itch of wanting a bunch of fish in a tank. And I broke rules where I was like, oh, you can't mix American and African cichlids. Plenty of people do it. I have a whole video on that um, called why you can successfully keep them together. And there's a lot of great points in there. And there are some you shouldn't, but there's a lot you can. So anyways, uh, the point is patience is something that I am just really learning in this hobby. Also, I guess the other value would be simplification. So those are the two things, being, keeping things really simple um, and being patient. 
and those things will uh, at least for me right now well I know are, are bringing me so much more joy than trying to achieve all this stuff that is often not even my own ideas it's stuff I've seen on the internet other youtubers other people doing things and that can be inspiring but you have to differentiate what's inspiring and what do you actually want to do and if you're just trying to emulate something else uh, there's a good chance it's not going to last because it's not actually coming from you so uh, yeah going pretty deep here but um, anyways that's all I got for you today um, and I hope you enjoyed the video and as soon as this thing continues to progress I will update you and I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you in the next one all right thanks so much take care